the hive cities of Necromunda. Untold billions crammed within mountains of metal. Vast insect mounds of tireless industry amid the toxic wastes of their own manufacture. Inside the hive cities, every breath of air, every drop of water is recycled a million times over. Every watt of power and each mouthful of food must be guarded against rival clans and outlaws. It is a place where only the strong can endure, and no one prospers. Except, of course, those at the very top. And yet, opportunity still exists for the gang bold enough to take it. In the foundation layers of the Underhive, all manner of treasures can still be found. Lost, forgotten, or abandoned in the dark. Kira, move your off. Later anyway. Whoa, whoa! We're with you! No hard feelings? Hell no. If Maren wanted to lead, she had to be strong enough. And she was weak. So we'll follow you, sister. So what's this all about? Why are we meeting on the way out of here? It's got to be big. Why risk it otherwise? Big enough that Tess is more worried about the house matriarchs hearing about it. Big enough to risk getting into a fight with the slab punchers. Ooh, so the biggest. It's gotta be loot, right? <laughs> Ahoy! Ugh. Shut up, Kira. Hey, lay off!
So, what's the deal, Tess? Yeah. <clears throat> Why'd you drag us all the way out of Hell's territory? My gang, my rules. I took a big hit last night. Shock went right to the core. Feel them quakes on the way here? Something big got kicked loose. This didn't just lightning getting earthed. Whatever it is, it's making its own power now. And that means only one thing. Archaeotech. No one knows about this yet, and we're out here to keep it that way. We'll be made for life! How are we getting there? I know someone with the route down. They can- Watch out! Tessera was furious about the ambush. The Black Ash knew she was onto something juicy. Just not what or where. But Tessera was a good leader. See? She inspired loyalty, so her gang got her out despite the cost. That left her with only one choice. To find the man knows a route into the Underhive, and continue a quest for riches. Because once blood is spilled, there's no turning back. sign of the black ash on her tail. We lost him. For now, at least. There's something else? Spit it out. Some Goliaths heading this way. Rowdy boys, I think. But if we stay quiet, they'll miss us. We need him gone. We're meeting our guide here. We'll set an ambush. Take him down, clean it quick. Grab some cover and take aim. And Kira, we can't let any of them get away. Just some local rowdies. Nothing we couldn't handle. So, you have a route to get us below, Gilda de Vos. I do, I do. I can direct you to an area of the Underhive you specify. Lawless place, it must be said. But you'll get there in exchange for a share in the Archaeotech. Just as I promised. 
as well as one other tiny thing. A down payment, if you will. The recent hardquakes have left me homeless, and there's a splendid location for a new hideout in an adjoining dome. Get me settled in there, and I'll have you on your way in no time. Always looking for an angle, huh? All right, you blood-sucking Gilda. You've got a deal. Them's the ones that jumped us. They've grabbed a hideout for the Gilder I told you about. All right. Surround them. Make sure they can't get away. And then we'll put that hideout down around their ears. And if you see that Gilder, don't put a scratch on him. Understand. I want to have a little chat with the fella. That Esha harpy got me to a new hideout as promised. And then locked me up with no fracking air. Until I was liberated. This is how I met Bloodfall. Gang leader to those unfortunate Goliaths that Tessera had so callously ambushed. Bloodfall already grasped, and there was a vast fortune of Archaeotech to be won. I helpfully suggested he might still catch up with Tessera by using a nearby train. Whether Bloodfall or Tessera won the prize, I get my cut. So. This train goes down below. That's what the Gilda said, right? That's right. Ain't she beautiful? This goes where we need to go. But isn't down below dog soldiers tough? I, I heard they're all ruddy mercs or exiles or, or cannibals or something. Yeah, yeah. And the grand dog's so tough and all, blah, blah, blah. I don't give a grox about him or any of the other scum down there. We gotta get that prize. Oi! Where do you think you're going? On that freaking train! You got to earn that right, boy. You gotta prove you and that little runch you're fronting. Won't you stand up feeding the rats? I accept your challenge, you wizened little ripperjack. Me and my rowdy boys will show you fossils of eating of herd. Huh, listen to this one. That's the spirit, boy. I'll let your mama know you died well when I see her next. Follow me! Bloodfall proved his worth. No one ever accused Ask Goliath of being subtle. They let their conflicts right out in the open, where everyone can see them. What I hadn't told Bloodfall or Tesra was that where they were going, there wasn't just the Grand Dog to worry about. We got small outpost ahead. Orlock's in it, but not the same bunch that jumped us. Some Goliaths are getting ready to make a move on it. <laughs> they look like dog soldiers. Perfect. We need to hide out close to the Archaeotech so we can prepare. We'll take this one while they're distracted. All right, then. Let's show them there's a new gang of these parts. So Tessera got her hideout. 
I went to Lei Lao for a while. And like always, she solved the problem in front of her by creating two more around the corner. Along with the dog soldiers, Tessera had upset another local gang called the Chokers. What had been a three-cornered fight just got a lot more complicated. That was Tessera, always making new friends. Come for my supremacy contest. Spectators or participants. We're not here to play your games, DeVos. Tell us where Tessera went, and we'll just go ahead and bounce out of here. Alas, that I cannot do. These other fine gangers have all paid to enter the contest in order to gain exclusive access to that information. Don't test my patience with that rot. Test errors onto something, and I want in. Word is that you know something. Oh, no, no, no. I could never tell you where to find Tessera if you mean to rob her. Whoever wins my supremacy contest will be going to help Tessera. Uh-huh. Well, we'll help her all right, won't we, boys? Well then, in that case, welcome to the contest. gang as I've seen, Flint was the best prospect for success. He and the Black Ash originated from the Cold Forges. The very same domes that Bloodvor and Tessera should be searching by now. I needed Flint to do one more little job before I set him loose. A fair 50-50 split for him, although the Orlock was reluctant at first. I was relieved when he grudgingly accepted. Why send another gang below, you ask? Built in redundancy, I reply. One of the three would succeed, and I would reap the rewards. Task I set for Flint and his Black Ash Gang was a simple one. Liberate a few fuel rods from the Goliaths, I said. Bring them back to me, and we'd split the profits. Simple. But once Flint saw how few guards were around, he decided to steal the Goliath's credit stash as well. It's like the man's hubris knew no bounds. But the worst of his insufferable arrogance was yet to come. Steady, lad, steady. I know what Gilded Divorce is selling. Let me go, and I'll tell you what he knows. Interesting. Go on. How do I know? You'll let me go. How do you know I won't torture you into telling me anyway? Well, my brother's in the, he's in the Rowdy Boys. 
And that was how Flint got to know all about the Roundy Boys. Where Tessa had gone. And how to get there. So Flint kept the fuel rods for himself and headed down below thinking he could cut me out of the deal. Me? What's a fool? Around the time that Flint was striking out on his own, Bloodfall and his rowdy boys had got as far as the train could take them into the Underhive. Bloodfall found himself in an area known as the Old Forest, an attempt to use gene formed trees to filter the air and provide nutrition. It was the perfect spot for a hideout. With Tessa and Flint going rogue, my best hope for success now lay with these, uh, sturdy and stout goliaths acting as my agents to seize the Archaeotech. Subtlety was surely not their strong point, but we were well past the time for that now. And so Bloodforce settled in with his rowdy boys. Chokers must have been starting to feel victimized. Two gangs arriving from the upper zones and taking chunks of their territory. They would have to respond soon. Before the Grand Dog sensed weakness and made some moves of his own. That's a dog-eat-dog -dog world in the Underhive. What's all this? Helions and chokers not at daggers drawn? But you were here. Weren't you, Tesra? Let's see what clues the scavengers have left for us. What are you waiting for? Take them down! Flint knew he needed to find Tessa soon. Not to rob her as he'd originally intended, but rather to join forces in alliance. He wasn't happy he'd missed her. But he was even less happy to see that the Hellions and the Chokers were working together. That meant there'd be tough fighting ahead. Of course, even if he found her, that left Flint with the awkward problem of not getting his head blown off before he even got a chance to open his mouth. Tessera had made a splash with the locals. Oh yes. So much so that the Chokers made a deal with Helianani to dance on Tessera's steaming entrails. They sent a combined force before the Eshers could settle in. Helen Annie even sent her own daughter, Patrexia, to lead the raid. That part didn't work out so good, though. Annie's little girl got herself caught and dragged away as a hostage when Tessera split the scene. With a little persuasion, Patrexia filled Tessera in on all the local gossip. She got to hear just how many gangers the Grand Dog could muster. A small army by all accounts. And that he'd put most of them to guard the Archaeotech. Maybe Tessera finally realized that she was going to need more help. She eventually decided on a detour to the Arboretum to gather materials. To brew more toxins for bombs and traps. But the Chokers weren't giving up the chase so easily. Any time now, Kira. No rush. Got it. Hell 
this That's right. Why the hell are you barging in in our fight? We had him right where we wanted him. Yeah, I could see that. So now we fight. Is that it? No. Now we talk. So talk. Why'd you help us? Because down here in the Underhive, I'm the closest thing you've got to a friend. Even if you don't get that yet. Funny. I remember you killing my girls not so long ago. Gotta team up now if we want to take on the Grand Dog. It's too hot for us to survive down here. Let alone win. On our own. You're not as dumb as you look, Flint. We can start by getting some better intel. Layouts. Access codes. Ooh, I like codes, babies. Sign me up! That Nightbane we got won't stay potent for long. We need to get it sealed into bombs straight away. That's okay. If we move on a ways, then some of my boys can scout around while you're all... brewing your poisons. Goliath Cleaver. There's something else you ought to know. What's that? Devos sent another gang down here, the Rowdy Boys. I know those blockheads. Well, swallow your hate when we find them, because we're gonna need them too. Sounds like the Rowdy's all right. And they found plenty of trouble. Let's go help them out and make some more new friends. Greed and necessity, the twin pistons of commerce. Flint had certainly caught on fastest. But once they'd seen the odds, Tessera and Bloodfawn knew they needed each other. Just as well as Flint did. At least, for now. Flint's intel uncovered an old rail tunnel that the Grand Dog was using to move his soldiers around the Underhive. The rail line would have to be sabotaged or else any attempt to seize the Archaeotech was doomed to failure. Naturally, Tessera demanded that Bloodfar and his rowdy boys undertook the task 
to prove their worth. And that they took one Orlok and one Escher along to watch for treachery. Ludvor and his boys had certainly proved themselves. Even the temptation of the fortuitous arm stash didn't induce them to go their own way. With the tunnel blocked and extra intel on the Grand Dog's patrols, the stage was set to seize the Archaeotech Horde. Although, seizing the Archaeotech would prove to be a lot easier than holding on to it. Cover fire. Slow and steady advance, then... Then grab the Archaeotech and go home. See? I miss it. Oh. If the clans ever hear about this little team-up, we'll all be outlawed. We'll be so stinking rich by then, we won't care. I'm feeling it. Let's do this. Dog soldiers rooted by the unlikely alliance, the Archaeotech at last lay within their grasp. But all three gang leaders knew they'd need to crack the vault before the Grand Dog returned for the Horde with his most psychotic followers. And as we say on Necromunda, if you're not strong enough to keep something, it was never yours to begin with. the rail tunnel. I did. There'd be even more of them if I did it. Shut it! These post-clan scums! I am ruler here! Kira, they'll kill us in the open with these numbers. Stalking everyone inside the vault, but softly now. If they catch on, we're done. I will deprive you of your life for what you have done. Your suffering will be endless! Oh no. He's going to bore us to death. Hell with that. Tesra! Doors won't hold long. We have busted the locks getting in. Doesn't matter. It's our house now. Let them come. Ha! 
<laughs> Blood four is stronger. Good riddance, you big oaf. If only he fought as well as he yelled. You both made it then. Looks like it. Fine. Now, we just split the archaeotech and go home. Yeah. Yeah. And from the outset, of course. I knew that they would band together to win the prize. I also knew that they would immediately split apart squabbling over it. On Necromunda, you don't own something if someone else can take it away from you.